When it comes to electric pickup trucks, we've all seen the Tesla Cybertruck in the news, but really for all the wrong reasons, whether it's whistling diesel showing its fragile unibody construction or other journalists showing how just impractical it is to use as an actual pickup truck. If you want an actual pickup truck that just happens to be an EV, you should look at this. This is the 2024 Ford F-150 Lightning. The F-150 has been the best-selling vehicle in the US for 30 to 40 years now, and there's a reason for it. So today we're gonna to take a look at the electric version, compare it to the gas version, and some of the electric competition by taking a look outside, inside, I'm gonna show you some of the features in this thing, we're gonna throw a bike in the back and we're also going to look in the bed to see some of the electric vehicle only features this one offers. And last but not least, we're gonna take it on the road to see what it's like to drive. Now, when we talk exterior and looks, you can't not mention the Cybertruck. That is meant to be a completely different thing and stand out from the crowd. This is really quite the opposite, obviously, right? It just looks like, for the most part, a regular F-150. But that's just kind of the ethos of Ford compared to Tesla. If you're trying to convert the loads of truck buyers in the US, you should probably go with something that's a little more familiar, even though it has a different powertrain. So at least that is their mindset. This does have some distinct features compared to the regular F-150 that you could tell it apart just by driving down the road. The front headlights and the front grille are of course different. The grille doesn't need any airflow like on the standard one being that it's electric. The front and rear taillights are also distinct and kind of have a more modern look to them, which makes sense for an electric vehicle. And last but not least, this is seen here in Avalanche, which frankly is a pretty cool color for a pickup truck. When it comes to EVs, most people think about the instant torque that they apply or the just sheer amount of power that they have compared to gas engine cars, which is all super valid. But one of the underrated features I think about electric vehicles is how manufacturers can get creative with packaging. And that's exactly what we're looking at here with the F-150 Lightning, where of course you would traditionally have a gasoline engine. They have decided to build out a frunk and give you a ton of space up here. You can store up to 400 pounds worth of junk up here and while of course more space is always better for storage or groceries whatever when I think about this from a truck perspective a lot of trucks have uh, somebody install a box in the bed of the truck where you can store truck things like you know tow straps or maybe fuel or something like that and that does take up space in the back of your bed uh, which can be critical. Some of these trucks have pretty small beds. To be able to put that kind of stuff up here, I think is pretty clutch and keeping that bed in the back completely usable for whatever you need to haul. So pretty neat. Of course, while we're here talking about where there would be a gas engine, we can talk about the electric motors in this thing. This is an all wheel drive version or four x four version. So it has two motors, 580 horsepower and 775 pound feet of torque. It is a torque monster this has a 131 kilowatt hour battery which is a pretty big battery and they're advertising in this model 320 miles of range you could step down to a lower tier model get a 90 ish kilowatt hour battery model and get 260 miles of range once again this one has 320 although i will have to say in the real world i haven't been able to eke out 320 miles of range out of this model just like the exterior, the interior is still mostly regular F-150 with a few exceptions. So let's start with the good and the F-150-ness. I mean, first and foremost, the amount of storage in here is insane. I mean, these door cards, you can fit practically an entire encyclopedia in. It's just massive. Same thing even with this center console. I mean, you could fit a giant toaster in here and in fact power it with these power outlets that you have these AC 120 volt power outlets for. I mean, it's, it's a very usable space for things like a truck where you need a lot of storage. Of course, we have all these drink holders as well, which is important to Americans. So that usability maintains here, as does the visibility excellent visibility in this truck i mean you there are no blind spots to speak of and that is quite important another thing visibility wise that i should point out is that silverado i drove not too long ago which is a great truck they're really trying to lean into that whole like 
massive masculinity, massive vehicle thing where they have a very high hood line. And this, the way the hood kind of slopes down, it makes it feel smaller than it is. And in fact, I could see more of the road and things around me. So I do like the lower hood line for practical purposes. Now, where does it differ, this vehicle, compared to the standard F-150? Well, you get a giant screen here for the infotainment. So they're hoping that people that are into EVs are gonna want these giant screens that every other EV has. And in fact, it's pretty good for the most part. I will say it's extremely simple and usable. It's kind of just this app-based layout, similar to what a phone would be. So it's very intuitive. Uh, the one thing they will say downsides against it is that you take away the physical controls that you get in the standard F-150. And that is a bit of a bummer for things like your HVAC, you know, your heated seats. They are fixed here when the screen is on, but you do have to go, you know, more clicks than you would want to adjust something like your cooled seat. So I would have to touch the cooled seat button and then hit this scroll wheel to adjust it or keep hitting that uh, specific heated seat or cooled seat button. Of course you get a uh, digital gauge cluster, which is customizable for your trip and all your gauges. Uh, the only downsides that I'll say based on what I'm seeing is some of these buttons are a little Mickey Mouse, uh, meaning that they they just don't feel very nice. They're kind of like Toys R Us buttons. For a pickup truck, I really wish they had more of a solid feel to them. Bit of a nitpick, and I guess it's probably worth mentioning that we're in the Lariat trim. Uh, Lariat gets you these uh, nicer heated and cooled seats. Uh, it gets you things like the power lift gate. Uh, it also gets you things like this massive moonroof, but it does come with quite a price premium. If you can keep the options down on this, I think you'll be happier because this thing does get expensive very fast. The last thing we'll talk about, as always, is the rear seating. Awesome. I mean, Ford figures it out. They know what people want in a pickup truck. You can put real life human beings back there. I'm 6'1". Uh, I sit back there with tons of leg room and even with my front seat at the position that I drive in. The headroom is a little bit tighter than I remember previous generation models, but it's been a little while since I've been in an F-150, but I still do fit back there. Uh, so that's really it. Once again, great overall space. They put a lot of time and resources into this and it shows. Let's head to the bed and see some of the features that are there before we try and cram a bike in this thing. Before we get to the bike test, it's worth mentioning some useful features this F-150 has, and they all relate to power. There are outlets all over this truck. I showed some in the interior, but the bed has some along with the front trunk. You do have to step up to the Enhanced Pro Power Package to get a 240 volt outlet, but there are 120 outlets all over. Now for the bike test, after seeing the front trunk, I started to wonder if it would be possible to fit a bike up there, because after all, we know it would fit in the bed no problem. As big as the frunk is, it isn't quite large enough to fit my road bike, even with the front tire off. But at least you have plenty of power ports to be able to plug in your air compressor to fill your tires. As always, if you enjoy the bike test, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button and leaving a comment below so you don't miss future videos. There is a whole ton to talk about when it comes to driving the F-150 Lightning. Not only are there suspension changes here, we need to talk about calibration, but one of the first things that I wanna to touch on is Blue Cruise. What is Blue Cruise? Well, it is what Ford is branding their sort of advanced driver aid. So I'm gonna engage it here and then we can talk about it. It is actual hands-free, which is really cool. Now, I still have to pay attention, which is important. So Blue Cruise is ADAS level two. Uh, if you're saying, what is ADAS level two? Advanced driver assistant services or something, software. Uh, basically, it is these aids that will help you, of course, drive your vehicle in a semi-autonomous ac action or uh, application. I say semi-autonomous because, once again, I still need to be very present for ADAS level two. But it is hands-free, in fact, and it's pretty good. Um, we're obviously in it right now. The truck is driving up this mountain, and I'm very curious. I haven't done this section of the highway. I'm very curious. It's 
Okay, so now it's telling me to hands on the steering wheel. So when I was back on another portion of 70 where it was very straight, mild turns, it was able to completely hands-free do its thing. As you get into twistier bits like this, um, it's going to have to, I see now it's back into hands-free. So it's going to kind of go back and forth between this kind of stuff. It's certainly gonna depend on lanes, but overall it's, it's a pretty good system uh, in terms of advanced driver aids. So definitely like it. One thing that is a negative that I'll say is that it is a subscription-based service. So while you do get three years of it, when you purchase this vehicle, after that three years, you're gonna to have to pay for that subscription. So bit of a bummer, and unfortunately, a lot of car manufacturers are going to this subscription-based service stuff. But what I think you can expect is, uh, you know, a lot of over there are over there are updates for this kind of thing to get even better, and probably a big part of the reason that it is subscription-based. Now that we've exited the highway, we can talk about everything else. And the first thing that stands out to me with this electric pickup truck is whenever I drive electric vehicles, they can of course be calibrated very differently. There's not a whole ton of difference between one electric vehicle to the other in terms of, of course there is outright power, but you know, in terms of how quiet it is, you know, the instant power of course, uh, but the way that you tune and the way that you program electric vehicles is what makes all the difference. And just like the exterior, just like the interior, while Ford is making this familiar to existing pickup truck owners and specifically F-150 owners, the way it drives as an electric vehicle out of the box simulates what I would call a you know, just regular F-150 internal combustion vehicle. And what I mean by that is the way it regenerates power is it feels very similar to how if you just lift off in a regular gasoline engine car and it would just sort of engine brake just the slightest, that's what it feels like in here. So it doesn't heavily, you know, feel like it's hitting the brakes uh, like a lot of electric vehicles do. It feels just like a light regeneration. Um, and once again, I think that's such a good idea. And we're as we're in this era of converting people from regular gas engine cars to these electric vehicles uh, because you want it to be familiar you don't want it to be something that's completely foreign to people now it does have an insane acceleration and amount of power which i will show you here so we're in this sort of closed course environment oh my goodness <laughs> it's it is actually i can't believe i'm saying this it is way faster than it needs to be like way faster. I love speed. I am someone who is a car enthusiast and loves sports cars. But man, let me tell you, this giant truck does not need to be this fast. Indicative of you know, the cyber trucks, the Rivians, which are even faster, in fact, which blows my mind that they're allowing people to just buy these vehicles that are essentially now missiles because they're so fast and they're so heavy. It is a little bit disconcerting, but that is neither here nor there. Let's just say that the power, instant, <laughs> uh, it is fun, and it will out drag race 99% of vehicles on the road, frankly, which is just mind boggling. Of course, there is no transmission. It's a single speed transmission, um, which makes things very simple. And of course, with there's no shifting, it's very smooth. Of course, it's very quiet. I will say that if you are turning and applying power it has a hard time putting down power it chirps wheels a lot it spins wheels more so than a lot of other electric all-wheel drive vehicles that i've driven um, so if you drive this very ham-fistedly it's a little bit you know not on the edge or anything like that but it's just kind of a little bit like not sorted uh, but in a straight line i mean it just it just absolutely goes the other thing that we need to talk about here um We'll get back to range, uh, which of course is important for electric vehicles, especially something that can tow, but uh, the suspension. So I brought us here to this sort of, sort of paved, sort of not road. It's sort of like mixed surface, uh, just to showcase how good the suspension is. While the F-150 Lightning, of course, exterior-wise looks very similar, interior-wise looks very similar to the F-150, 
it is actually very different underneath. Of course, we have this giant battery pack, we have an electric motor, well, multiple electric motors, uh, but the rear suspension is completely different in this. No longer a live axle in the electric vehicle version. Now, there's a lot of reasons for that. You can look up videos that explain and, and kind of show you the extent of the changes, but essentially you have a motor in the front and you have a motor in the back, and they're not physically connected like your traditional truck would be with a prop shaft or a drive shaft. Um, and what that gives you is an independent rear suspension, the first for an F-150, in fact. Uh, so as you, I, I think I notice live axle or, or you know, uh, traditional axle trucks, where I notice that the most is like where you're hitting a bump mid corner. It sort of has this like, you know, because the this rear end is a solid live axle, it kind of does this kind of skip across, uh, especially if you're kind of hustling a truck. This thing remains very planted around turns, especially even with bumps, which is really nice. And overall, it also just rides so well. This is for sure focused on comfort more than anything else. There are some downsides to that we'll, we'll get to, but I mean, this road is probably rougher than it looks on camera. Uh, and when I've driven other vehicles in this, it's like, uh, you know, you can hear my voice actually change because of the roughness of the road. This thing is just soaking it up. It is so soft and so compliant, which actually comes with a lot of kind of body motions as well. So the downside to that is, uh, in my opinion, it's a little under damped and really even under sprung because there's a lot of extra body motions when you hit a bigger bump. The small stuff, it soaks up really well, but when you hit a bigger bump, it's sort of like a little bit of pogoing up and down. And let's see if this gentleman's gonna let us go. That was very nice of him. Thank you, sir. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of pogoing up and down uh, when you hit the bigger bump. So it kind of like shudders a little bit. I would like, uh, once again, a little more damping, a little more spring. But once again, it's focused on comfort and, and I think that's right on brand for this truck. Uh, so overall, I mean, this is a truly fantastic package. I think the point that I wanna drive across is while it does indicate or show that, you know, it looks similar to an F-150, it really is quite different. Uh, so in terms of the Cybertruck, which looks completely different, but is really just like almost any other Tesla sort of underneath to a certain extent, um, this one acts as a, you know, something that is very similar and understated, but is actually quite in fact different. Now, the elephant of course in the room here is the usability of this pickup truck. It is extremely usable as a pickup truck for loading and unloading, just like every other truck. Uh, unlike the Cybertruck, you don't have to worry about um, trying to get over that mammoth hump that the Cybertruck has on the side when you're trying to load things. Um, you know, it works, it has these trailer controls, which are excellent. Uh, F-150 is so good at that kind of stuff. That's all included here. It's meant to be a truck. But the one thing that it doesn't do quite well, of course, is towing. And it's really twofold with the towing. Of course, when you tow with an electric vehicle, you really lose a lot of range. And to be fair, that does happen with gas engines too, right? Like you get very poor fuel economy with a gas engine vehicle towing you know, a, a large load. So in fairness, okay, yeah, you're getting a lot less range. But when it comes to charging, it's one thing that there is a fair amount of electric charging for regular electric vehicles if you want to go on like a road trip or something. But imagine if you had a trailer. Like a lot of these charging locations are not set up for somebody who has a truck and trailer to pull in and charge. So that's where the biggest problem in my eyes is, is not only is there less range with towing and it makes it a lot harder when you frequently have to fuel up, whether it's gas or electric electrons, uh, but really the fact that you don't have a good place to do it, I think is the ultimate deal breaker. So that's something that we have to figure out. You know, the rest of this is just so good. Like why would you buy this um, over something like the Cybertruck? It's the familiarity. It's the fact that you can use it every day as a pickup truck. It rides 
excellent. Uh, it has decent range. Um, I'm getting just under 300 miles out of a charge with this thing, which is pretty good. They're advertising 320 with this 131 kilowatt hour battery model. And let's be honest, you really never get the range that they advertise for any of these electric vehicles. So decent range, but it is extremely expensive. So that is something that you have to keep in mind. There are a lot of incentives on these vehicles, but I think if you are somebody who is open to electric vehicles, I really do think that this could be an excellent replacement for somebody who already has an F-150 um, and isn't doing a whole ton of, of towing and hauling. If you're using this as an SUV, driving it around town, it's gonna be excellent at that with the, the ride and of course, you know, the electric powertrain, how smooth it is, how fast it is. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, this has been really fun to experience this F-150 finally because it does have a lot going for it. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. If you made it this far in the video, thank you very much. Consider hitting that subscribe button and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.